가두고 다 We are very excited about the idea of speaking Cantonese. So I think we will mainly speak Cantonese. And I think I will try to summarize uh, our points in English a little bit. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. So you are in Gong, Gong Dong Wao. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That sounds nice. <laughs> 我們的責任就是我們可以開始討論我們的主要你就是主角的部分我們聽你講的 咁,呃,兩個展覽,我諗嗰個,呃,內容呢,都變化好多,即係除你,呃,咁多年,我做緊個,呃,諗法啊,嗰個觀念有好多嘅變化。上一次嘅展覽呢,好多作品都係,譬
held in the uh, art museum in uh, University of Hong Kong. It was also organized by like this one by uh, Alex King, uh, a, gallery, a gallerist who Jay Chang worked with. And um, the, I think the program was French made. It's also it's also one it's also a program of French made at this time. And uh, Jay Chang thinks that it was very important for him because 14, 15 years ago, his work were not so well known in Asia. So um, it was a great opportunity at the time for him to introduce his work to the Hong Kong audience. And also the huge painting they sent from Paris. So this time, as a continuation of their last collaboration, this time the organizer is Delphine, is Alex's daughter. She is crazy enough to organize the show like this for Jai Chang. Jai Chang Yeah, because my uh, young, young man, I just like this. I just change the form. Change the form. Just like is just like we so talking about, is quite spontaneous. Not quite spontaneous. Is quite spontaneous. So I start to be quite concerned. I have some things to do. Definitely, I'm very 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 like I said in the beginning, a more has more reference to the reality. It has a, a stronger sense of participation. So it's more difficult to organize an exhibition like this because it's a, it's more sensitive. And it's more challenging. And it's very important to have a good wife, Tina, <laughs> because Tina have the chance to solve a lot of problems. So I think I should say that the two ladies are very important. The two ladies to thank for Stephanie and Tina. Because I am as a artist, I think that I am a artist, 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 I am a So in terms of the exhibition, he actually didn't think a lot. He leaves it for the creator and the organizer of the exhibition. Uh, but he thinks that a good curatorial concept can um, elevate uh, the works, uh, like in this show. So it's only a thing about how you take a form of culture. So he said that artists should pay a lot of attention to collaboration, not only with curator but also with the society, in order to uh, express or circulate the ideas of the world in the best way. Okay. So, for example, three days ago when they just arrived here, they realized that it's actually not possible to hand the painting because I never mentioned that long ago. Uh, many problems. Many problems. <laughs> <laughs> so they everything is problem. Everything is problem, but everything turned out okay. Yeah. After two two days, and then and then we fired him, and then we then we get our our very first place is everything is okay. Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matina, what do you think about? <laughs> well, about I think. Show? What do I think about the show? Well, I think. It is very important to have obstacles if you do an exhibition because sometimes problems and obstacles make you find something new. For example, we, as Jiechen just said, we were not able to have the big paintings because they were just too heavy 
for the hanging system. So the frame maker came up with the idea to put them on uh, the blocks you see there. And actually I think it is a very nice um, way to show the narrative paintings like the ones you see in the back. Um, that is called Tale of the Eleventh Day and that shows some kind of paradise in which animals of different species and men um, have different kinds of relationships. For example, they are making love, but sometimes they are, might also be fighting. Um, and I think the way to present um, these paintings in an angle uh, brings them closer to the viewer and makes them read the work more than just to look at them. And so I think through the obstacles uh, we met this time, we found a new way to look at uh, the works, and that's wonderful. So we are very happy and very pleased uh, with the overall um, aspect of uh, this exhibition. And maybe I just introduce to you, we have three different spaces, you uh, sitting in the middle space, and uh, each space is very different. Um, and we also have works that range from uh, the early 1980s um, until uh, this year. So it ranges really in many different um, series um, Young Dijon has been working on since his emigration to France in 1989. Um, but he doesn't want to see the show as a retrospective, um, and I think he is right. Um, because all the subjects uh, he shows here is something that all the uh, media he uses here are still important to him, and he develops them uh, in time. So no work is finished. So it's very dangerous to let him near his paintings because he might <laughs> go on and change them. Is that right, Yechan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, tell me the problem. And so, also this time we have to think of uh, think, things very much about uh, from, from, from the institute because uh, uh, the show was very short time, only two, two months before the opening. And they are very huge space. So, uh, so after we ask each studio to help, then they are really follow. Yes, we could borrow some words from Ink Studio, where Yang Jiechan had a solo exhibition last year in Beijing. So, in the um, space to your left, um, to your right hand side, you have the oldest works of the 1980s, you can see them later. These are abstract ink paintings, um, which actually um, are a kind of deconstruction of traditional uh, flower, bird and flower paintings. So at that time, Yang Dechang took out some details of traditional bird and flower paintings, for example, by Xu Wei, and enlarged them and uh, made them look like an abstract ink painting. In the same space, you have very recent works, which are also bird and flower paintings, but bird and flower paintings that are copies of works by a Western, not yet artist at the time, by Adolf Hitler, or a want-to-be artist, Adolf Hitler. Yang Tichang worked on this series um, for three years, where he copied um, works, bird and flower paintings, but also landscape paintings by this reviled historical figure in two fashions, first authentically and then um, in a fashion in the style of a Sun Emperor Guizhou. Um, so we have um, this relationship between um, the early works that try to get away from tradition and then after 30 years of artistic creation the artist finds back to something figurative, to bird and flower paintings, but in a very critical way. So he uses the figurative in a very critical uh, way that is related to um, our life, to the situation in our world. And this is what you will find throughout the exhibition. All the works, even though they might seem abstract or aesthetic, they are all related to the world we live in, and they all speak about the position the artist has
has within this world and the individual has within this world. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> Tina,我们关于这个Hate 歷史上就說這些人是分軍或者是獨裁者之類的東西很簡單的去批評他們其實他裡面有可能有很多複雜性 so my question for Jie Chang is about his work uh, from this recent years. Um, is um, is a copy of uh, some landscape painting by Adolf Hitler, and it is interesting because I always think that Jie Chang has a special um, love uh, for those negative figures in history. So. Adolf Hitler or Song Hai Zhong, the people who criticize them as a, um, like a bad emperor or things like that. But Jie Chang thinks that um, there are usually interesting things or inspirations that can, can be found in these people. So the way that he understands these people is actually copying their art. It's, it's a little bit like the traditional literati who copy the older master in order to reach a kind of um, synchronization the old master and himself. So my question for Jie Chang is uh, having to talk about his love of these negative figures in history. That is related to the environment where he grew up because it is a very clean environment. <laughs> Everything is dried by the sun, which is a metaphor of mom. So, there is also moon uh, in opposition of the sun, because they always just talk about the sun, but no one talks about the moon. So 好的,同埋壞的,好正常。So, but it's also about, it's also related to his practice of Taoism. And uh, there's a famous saying, like, Tao Te Ching, maybe the first principle of Taoism is the, something called Tao He. You can name is not the real doubt, it's the more the longbow. Two thousand is that's the conventional translation. But as my is maybe something wrong, so yeah. I, I I try to form another way. So he, he wants to um, cut the sentence differently, so he says the Tao is or the Tao can, and the Tao is not or the Tao cannot, mm -hmm. and that's the eternal Tao. Or you can say the Tao is positive, the Tao is negative, that's the eternal Tao. So here you have the principle of yin and yang again. Yeah. Or of the sun and the moon. Yeah, excellent. And also the Chinese uh, very important philosophy book, Yi Jing, uh, change of the book. Book uh, changes. Yeah, yeah book changing. The Yi also sun and moon. You know, 
the same time. So for me, yes, for me it's also Taoism. And also, uh, to my, to my, to my, I think that's a very important thing is not like not like the so when he grew up, everything was clean, that students uh, should do everything in the correct way. So the education is about teaching you the correct ways to do things, right? But he realized that in contemporary culture, it's actually important to recognize the value of dirtiness because dirtiness is uh, a kind of possibility, dirtiness is a kind of resistance. So he always tried to find the dirtiness in cleanness, and the cleanness in dirtiness, a kind of dialectic that he always used. <laughs> Say for example, Luton is actually very beautiful, but very dirty. <laughs> So it's also related to his, his experience of um, moving abroad. So he moved to France and Germany in 1989. It gave him a distance to retrospect his life back in China. He finds that everything can be seen in the opposite way. So it, I think it's an important way to think about things. From a technical sense, he realized that he actually couldn't paint as well as a lot of people uh, if, if, if you talk about artistic skills. So he thinks that it's actually not possible to uh, progress in terms of uh, those kind of uh, traditional aesthetics. For example, my calligraphy, I, I continue my calligraphy like my professor, I think it's uh, impossible to, to, to over him. So one of the most interesting thing about Zhejiang calligraphy is he actually went upside down the other direction of the usual way. He had a lot of special things because he did it after he left. Like Mr. Martin said, Of that period of time, I actually uh, having a lot of reference of uh, Xu Wei's work. 
即係文人有好多種意識，除咗宋徽宗嘅意識之外，有好多嘅隨嚟啊，包括山人啊、石頭嗰種咁嘅咁嘅咁樣嘅狀態。誒、嗯，傳統文人入邊其實都有多呢啲半譯嘅，太多啦，太多啦，半譯分子太多啦，係咪？嗯，呢個智慧嚟。You really appreciate those avant-garders using today's terms in traditional Chinese literature. 而且我覺得而家中國嘅成個形勢嘅所謂嘅傳統繪畫或者係水墨水墨繪畫，都係往即係畫院嗰個方向去行。我覺得呢個係係一個大嘅勢嘅形勢啦。我覺得有一啲形勢咪咁樣行，都係都係有一種有一種有一種作用。即係嗰個往畫院嘅方向行嘅係個特點係點咧？即係既然即係話追求一啲真善美啦。Baby talk 嗰種嗰種嗰種味。The the the mainstream art in painting in mainland China now is very singular in terms of students or young artists who talk to portray beauty and positive things only in their paintings, but not a kind of critical thinking for themselves. 嗰啲離傳統文人意識行得亦都好遠嘅，基本上都係自我上。And this is very far away from traditional thinking. So we can try to continue to walk our own path. There is no possibility to walk our own path. I think this is another problem. Okay, so he wants to look for a different way of thinking. Okay, so he wants to look for a different way of thinking. Okay, so he wants to different possibility of literary painting. This is a summary of what he said. So let's talk about this book. What is the topic? Okay. Good. 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 我哋做咗幾廿年嗰啲，係一個好好嘅美國電影嘅一個。早安越南啊嘛，嗯，呢個你又想起早安越南呢個電影啊？點解誒點解起呢個題目咧？誒，即係一定要冇發俾個題目。我又唔知諗咗咁點辦，因為都唔知指乜嘢。Because the reason why he had this title is because definitely. Urge him before he even decides what to show for a title, so he just came up with this. Good morning. 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 Whenever, whenever, whenever he travels from Paris to Hong Kong, he always arrives in the morning at 6 or so. So the first impression of Hong Kong for him is always good morning. Yeah, and I, I really love Hong Kong good morning. Yeah, the six hours I met all the hot air meters are really hot. I really love it. I think another interesting thing is that the word in the morning is a Chinese word. Yes, it's not a Chinese word. 咁我哋個李浩啊，冇咩味道嘅李浩，早晨。我覺得佢呢個有一個文化嘅意義，即係呢種我哋講早晨嗰種親切感好強。嗯嗯。另外一樣嘢就係你嘅作品入邊都經常，我覺得喺香港展你嘅作品一個好大嘅好處咧，就係其實好多人都會睇得明你入邊嗰種誒、嗯，譬如話廣東話，即係嗰種廣東文化嗰種誒智慧嘅。係嗰種比較比較比較比較重一啲嘅嗰種品味。譬如講講句唔好聽就係鹹濕味嗰啲嘅。And another great thing about Zhou Yanzhichang doing an exhibition in Hong Kong is actually a lot of his works is about this Cantonese culture, a Cantonese accent, a Cantonese kind of wisdom. Say for example, the title in 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 Chinese is Hong Kong Zhou San, and Zhou San is a Cantonese expression. You don't say that in any Mandarin. And another example is why right there is to is a pair of um, calligraphy. It's always one of my favorites. As uh, oh, 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 oh my god, yeah. oh my god, and oh dear, it's actually a um, dirty word in uh, Cantonese. And uh, there is actually a wonderful story behind. Let me go and go and go When I watch TV, the uh, Wow, 咁大件事，都唔知咩回事，烏天瘴氣
突然間一個紐約仔好靚仔咁衝出嚟喺個煙塵滾滾跑部車度，第一句就話 Oh my God， 記住咗啦。我覺得成個成個印象咁大件事，就係佢個嗰個 voice 一句話，我覺得呢個就係可以可以定喺歷史上邊。但係點樣畫出嚟我就冇辦法，但係寫出嚟我就有辦法，所以我就用咗呢、這個呢、這個呢、這個意識去表達咗呢件呢件事。我諗佢係代表一個好人性或者有好突發事件嘅時候嘅一個嘅一個表達。當然我可以寫唐詩三百首冇問題，但係我覺得喺呢個時代，再寫唐詩三百首已經好多人咁樣去做。呢件事係由於由於嗰日嘅嗰個現象，激起我咁樣去做。It's actually done during the 9/11, 11, uh, the 11 event in,、uh, in the United States, and he was watching TV and then saw it saw in the news、uh, there was a guy running away from the from the explosion, saying, "Oh my God!" and、uh, when he really When he really wants to do a work or a painting about、uh, 9/11, he found it it was it wasn't possible to do a painting about it because it was too complicated. But、uh, the strongest、uh, impression he had about the event is actually this "Oh my God" coming from the young man in New York. That's why he made calligraphy full of "Oh my God." Yeah, if I make the picture, everybody know, you know.、Uh, the, 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 the Yeah, it's an information. I don't need to do it. But oh my God, it's not only this happen. You know, it can be anything.、Mm-hmm. So this is art, it's country. And how to translate Cantonese? I I think long time. I don't know. They don't have oh my God. So, so finally, I think、uh, this is good. This good to translate for you. Everything even more rich than oh my God. I say. 誒，如果係廣東人嘅話，就唔會咁樣講。<笑>我的天啊，唔會一定。我的天唔得嘅。一定係講呢句説話。哦，因為佢你講得低聲啲，因為佢有九個九個調啊，唔係話一個調。高啲就麻煩啦嚇，低啲咧就係係好温柔嘅，甚至講 hello 啦，基本上。所以啲大招呼嘅話。所以所以就覺得啲作用佢咯。當然，如果翻譯出嚟咁就麻煩。一定要聽到把聲先得。The problem only is as part of the French made and French people will think it means Jew. Yeah, also because my French made a fool, so maybe I maybe I maybe I lose something. So. And Cantonese culture is important as humor, so we have to think about it. And humor in art is very important. Humor, if we don't have humor, it's difficult life. Ah, 通過呢幽默嘅嘢，可以轉換好多好多可能性。我覺得廣東話或者廣東新聞呢方面係比較比較強勢。我覺得你嘅作品有一個好犀利嘅地方，就係誒你運用咗一啲，譬如話廣東文化或者一啲好市井嘅，或者係好多係平時可能拎唔出台面嚟嘅嘢，包括一啲粗口啊。好咗邋遢啊，或者色情啊、政治嘅嘢咁樣，但係你有辦法將佢擺入你嘅作品度，而且用一種誒、呃、結合你對於傳統藝術語言嗰種瞭解，然之後將佢轉化成一種新嘅可能性。呢樣嘢係令到我哋，即、就、係、是、我都係作為一個香港人，或者都係算係廣東人啦，咁樣嘅，即、就、係、是、對於自己嗰種文化，即、就、係、是、平時我哋可能會睇唔起自己嘅文化，但係呢啲作品入邊覺得好有自信。最經典嘅一個作品就係佢誒做咗一個錦旗，呢、这個錦旗就嗰個寫住我們什麼都會，就是説不好普通話，就係、是、呢個作品。但係今次冇展示出嚟啦。咁就譬如話呢一種咁樣嘅作品喺你個創作入邊都係一個好重要，即、就、係、是、對於自己嗰種邊緣性，甚至係覺得有一種好驕傲，而唔係去奉承嗰種中心嘅意識。我覺得一個人高貴就好緊要。你高貴個格都上咗去啦，你其實乜嘢都睇得好好清淡。就算就算攞個藤俾人都覺得係好 happy。一定要將自己人格提高，然後再去填一邋遢啊、乾淨啊，對佢嚟講都係濕濕碎嘅。所以我覺得藝術，特別藝術家應該係先提高自己人格，然後就可以為所欲為。
So what I said is uh, I really appreciate the kind of confidence in his work because he makes use of a lot of motive or subject matters that are not so elegant, say for example dirty words or scenes of execution or paintings by um, uh, this kind of historical negative figures. But he always found a way to transform this motive and subject matters with his understanding of traditional artistic language and make them a kind of inspiration to see the world differently. And I think it's a, it's a great uh, innovation uh, he made in his art. And he thinks that the most important thing is not the subject matter or the motive. It's the most important thing is to be try to be noble to yourself. When you are when you are good enough, when you are good enough to trust that you are, you have a noble, um, how to say, character, char character, then you can do anything. You can put anything in art. It doesn't matter. I think what is on the other man, I will never like you. We are not go to give me some need more than I do. I don't see a few that I saw a little high for in Goy, in Goy, you will love you. You think there is a lot of. Uh, Intellectuals or literati in Chinese history were actually so noble that they uh, even despised the emperor. <laughs> 我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的小孩的路西跟我的好,我的
but the important thing is actually do it differently. Uh, think of uh, the other way around. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> If you have any questions, you can raise them. We can discuss. Them. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> they will cancel. Aside from the creation of works that we can appreciate, and I think of one of the reasons why brush painting is hard, or ink painting is hard, is because it's also a practice. And the practice transforms the practitioner. Uh, and so you adopting, shall we say, the, the not just the positive side of the world, but also embracing the negative side of the world as your choice of subject matter, and how that becomes part of your practice, how have you seen that change yourself? Or how does that develop yourself? Because I also believe that when one lives with your work, it's also a kind of practice. So if, as we live with your work, what kinds of results can we see that might be different than only seeing the positive? I think so, 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 I think this is why I always don't like my painting, I always change it. So, <laughs> you must tell your, my wife very worried about, about me because uh, if they don't send out, it's continue. So, so until it's very black. So, I don't like my painting, I'm sorry. Always I don't like it. Yeah, but, um, but after a few days, if I destroy it, and then I still miss you, so I miss the painting. So this is my, I don't know, this maybe is my problem. So, so for example, uh, at least call it my old painting. There are two paintings uh, from 86, 85. I still want more this kind of painting. I bought it more than 1,000 paintings so, uh, in 94, the uh, first time when I go back to China. Now I feel very pity. You know? <laughs> so, so for me, I don't know. I always want to, want to, want to try to be better, better than better. And, and how better? This is everybody different. So, but uh, a difficult question for me. Uh, can you help me? Because <laughs> <laughs> she knows she knows my crazy. <laughs> so. I, I think I, I like very much your question. It's a, it's a very difficult question, and I think um, you can write a book about it. But yeah, it's, sure. it's a very um, great way to look at ink painting um, by putting the emphasis on the aspect of practice, because that's where it actually comes from. I mean, the people who did ink painting and who lived with the original were not. Professional artists. Um, originally, they were officials who, uh, through practicing calligraphy and ink, as you all know, um, tried to enhance their character or to, um, well, be better and better, as Gechang uh, just said. And um, well, I think you already mentioned this too during this talk. Um, it's important to, things, uh, to see things from different angles. And through this practice, or through his way of practicing ink and calligraphy, he 
He does it. For example, if you look at these uh, two calligraphies to your right side, oh my God and oh you, um, they are full of mistakes. Uh, in traditional Chinese calligraphies, these are impossible works. I mean, you have drippings and uh, they really look too raw, even though, of course, you can say this kind of rawness is related to Taoism, but um, they are just um, too bad for traditional Chinese calligraphy. But if you look at them from a different angle, they become um, very consequent works. And um, they are right. So this is the way of looking at one thing uh, from different angles. And I think that's what he learns through the practice of his art. And maybe the viewer can look at his works from this angle too and then at his life. And today they are very good examples because now it's open a very big discussion for Bada Shan in, in America. So today I have a very strong discussion with uh, Yin Qilan, uh, the, 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 or the publisher in Beijing. I tell him most of the painting is fake because it's beautiful. So only some painting very ugly, it's very violent, it's, it's really true. So this is this is really good picture. So so many people they want to make the, the market, so they make a more 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 artist painting for Bata Shanyan, you know, after. So this is really most people they, they want beautiful painting belong to Bata Shanyan, but it's the wrong way. So sometimes it have to have to difficult. It's, you have to learn from your whole life. You have to pay for your whole life in the in the great master painting or please. You may you may Bata Shanyan go into more hollow. The people are going to come out and buy one thing. They come in so they don't want to buy one thing. They just want to have a good time. So how to translate this? 所以,但是有時候幾張先是真的。我覺得真的都沒有都不出過三次張。So he thinks that the, the era of uh, Bai Dai Shanren, he was never a professional painter. He never had to... Um, he, never, he never had to consider if his painting is good looking or not, because he never had to consider having people see his paintings. Of course, if you have a Chinese traditional Chinese culture, there are many people who are very good in the world. I don't know what to say. 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 So, it's important to recognize the mistakes and the errors in uh, art uh, and recognize them as important part of a great tradition. So this really and also my life. I have happy life, of course, but uh, in other side, uh, because I, I come from a very dirty park, so I, because today I feel very happy. So we need something, something dirty, something wild, we have to understand, something not easy. I hope uh, we are happy. If I'm happy, it's true, it's, it's normal. I don't know. So for for the Chinese, uh, the si, that is the one that si, si, be one that go up. Si, that should be more strong, more firm, more 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 so a few a few months ago, uh, I was uh, checking with uh, Martina. Martina also said something that impressed me a lot. Is about, uh, she thinks that, especially in art, the problem of China now is uh, people uh, don't know how to recognize the importance of failure. Or they don't know how to recognize the importance of uh, making correction. All they do is uh, 
showing the right sign, showing what's correct from the perspective. But it's actually history is a combination of mistakes and failure uh, instead of uh, the so-called right things. So I think it's a very important when we see, especially in contemporary art, because contemporary art, uh, the mission of contemporary art is always providing us uh, distance to think about the reality, or the kind of criticality. Uh, if contemporary art show the same thing as the official ideology that is Just now, you remind me. Um, last year, I showed a German artist um, who was reflecting about modernism, and um, his work um, was called um, "Rewriting the Modern." And actually, he was talking about the same thing about the aspects that have been forgotten by modernism. And I think today we are all in a rush, and it's uh, just important. Um, to look at the small things or maybe at the failures and not to forget them. And I, for me, I think Cantonese culture is something that can embrace this more easily maybe than mainland culture or the northern Chinese culture, which for me is, maybe I'm wrong, I'm not sure, is a culture of heroism. I don't know. <laughs> so I think um, maybe that's also a reason why I'm happy that we are speaking Cantonese today. Okay, that one higher. Any other question? If all they have a ego seek under, are we almost done in yeah. terms of time? I think if there's no more questions, then um, we'd like to thank Yang Ji Chang for, and Martina and Anthony for their very insightful talk and discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Opening, we will uh, have some speeches at 7 o'clock.